Hi lovelies, welcome to my channel and in today's video I'm going to go over 5 tips to make you more successful in changing your diet to an anti-inflammatory one. How I did it, because I've done it for a whole year, and also some tips and tricks along the way. So stay tuned! So first and foremost, the most important thing you need to know in terms of changing your diet to an anti-inflammatory diet is the why. So what that means is, why do you want to change your diet? Is it because your doctor told you? Is it because of your own health? Is it because you're just curious about this diet in general? Or is it something that you feel like you want to lose weight for? The first, second reasons for your doctor for your health are very good reasons. If you're just trying this diet out, sure, why not? But if you're looking for this diet in terms of weight loss or anything like that, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because this diet is more catered towards people who are dealing with chronic illnesses. At least that's the reason why I chose to go on this diet because I have psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. And so it's important for me to take care of my body and to reduce the inflammation that exists when my disease flares up. Step number one, educate yourself. What that means is first and foremost, find out what an anti-inflammatory diet is and what exactly can cause your body to create inflammation within it. And then also look at some types of foods that are going to help you change that inflammation level and drop it right down. So for me, what that meant was that I decided to look at taking out gluten, dairy, and sugar as much as possible because all three of these areas are often key to causing inflammation in somebody's body. However, on the other hand, I also looked at how to promote better gut health. I also looked at foods that were light on my stomach and also foods that were able to reduce the inflammation within my body, such as turmeric or things that had lots of antioxidants in them so that that would benefit the nutrition in my body. Another key important thing about this is that you want to make sure that it is something that is going to be good for your lifestyle because there's no point in trying to change your diet and then realizing there's no way that you can do this Sure, it might be difficult, but for instance, if you have a family and you need to cater for everyone's food, it is going to be a lot harder for yourself to change your lifestyle towards an anti-inflammatory diet because you are going to have to look at everybody's food, not just your own. Well, for me, in my case, I am someone who just lives by myself and therefore I only need to look out after my own foods. However, this might be difficult for someone who has a big family and you have to cater to all of the foods in the family. Well, as on the other hand, in my case, I only have to really look after myself and therefore I'm a lot more flexible in terms of what I want to eat and what I can't eat. When I started this journey, I did a lot of research on things like what sugar causes to the body, what gluten does to the body and what dairy also does to the body. And for me, in my case, because I have Asian descent in me, it's very common for my type of genealogy to have lactose intolerance. It's also another case that I realized that I actually was eating a lot of added sugars that I just didn't realize were in my foods all the time, especially in processed foods, especially things that I just didn't realize had sugar and were causing problems for me. Another really important thing that I found out during this whole process was that because I now had this knowledge, I was able to set myself up for the next step. Tip number two. So that means to redo your pantry and your fridge. Look at everything in a fridge, take it out, Look at all the ingredients labels and see if there's anything that claims contains gluten, dairy, or any refined sugars. Refined sugars have over 70 different names for them, so make sure to add that into your research when you are first looking at what sugar entails. Because all of them are tricky ways that companies try and change the name of the ingredient that they put in, but at the end of the day, it's still sugar. Another thing is that also when you are going through all of these items, don't feel bad about just putting it to a side. Imagine you're quarantining this food don't worry about immediately throwing out because in the beginning it's very hard to immediately throw everything out and have a bare fridge and you freak out and go oh my gosh I can't do this at all. No, put it to a side and realize that those things will be phased out or given away or maybe you can do something with it and maybe create some food for a friend of yours and then give it that way. So don't feel like you are going to waste money, don't feel like you're going to give away food and not have any food for yourself because that is only just going to cause you to freak out and believe that you can't do this diet. Another great way after you've gone through your diet and your pantry is to start looking at the alternative types of food you can add into it. For instance, taking out plain flour, there's still gluten-free flour that you can buy that you can put back in. There's also, when you take out dairy, you can also look at lactose-free products that might instead be a better soup for you because maybe it's the lactose in milk that's causing you problems. For me, I personally took out a lot of things like pizzas, pastas, the bready carbs that I would occasionally eat because I live in Australia and that's a pretty common. 
and instead look at first and foremost whether or not that was something I could eat and second of all whether or not that's something that I wanted to eat anymore because this is a whole complete lifestyle change. This is not a temporary thing. You're not just going to do this for three months and then go back to how you were. If you're dealing with a disease like I am, this is something that you're just going to have to learn and maintain for the rest of your life. So it's better now to actually decide for yourself if this is something you want to continue eating. For instance, if you eat pizzas every fortnight, maybe you should start looking at whether the case is that, do I need to eat pizza all the time? Or would I like to try some other dishes, some more fun, more fun exciting dishes? And that leads me to Point number three. Point number three is that when you have a new fridge and a new pantry and all of these exciting new alternative foods in there, one important way to set yourself up for success is rather than getting overwhelmed and going, oh my gosh, I'm busy, I have a busy life, I'm working all the time and I've got a family to take care of, or maybe you're just a busy person like me and running your own business. In that case then, rather than going, I need to make all of these foods in preparation and they're all new and oh my gosh, and getting really overwhelmed with it all, Start by meal prepping in small amounts. This is also a tip that I tell to my students who come and be coached with me one-on-one. -on -one, and that's something, if that's what you're interested in, by all means, let me know. This little tip is actually really useful for anybody who feels that they actually get overwhelmed easily by the idea of changing their diet. By meal prepping in small amounts, and I'm not saying to meal prep loads and loads of food at one go, because I'm not necessarily somebody who enjoys eating the same thing over and over again, nor do I enjoy frozen food all the time. By meal prepping certain things like cutting up vegetables and having it in bulk or by prepping some rice beforehand in a larger amount, I can always pull that out of the fridge, reheat it and then use it for that day's meal. That way I feel like I'm getting different food every single time and also I feel like I'm not wasting time all day trying to cook something, trying to clean something. I can just whip it up and then add it in and then be done and go back to my usual day. Please comment down below if this is something that you also do not enjoy because I am somebody who loves trying different foods at every single meal and so I very rarely have the same thing twice if every third meal even the same. So let me know if that's just me and I'm strange or if you're somebody who just can't eat the same thing over and over again. Things that I love to have in my fridge I like to find some foods that are probiotic and probiotic foods are things like kefir, kefir and that is for some people, yes it is dairy but because of the bacteria that is within it, it's actually really good for your gut health and so I eat it every single day and I also have things like matcha in my fridge because guys that is the best way to store matcha, maybe I'll do a little talk about matcha another time. I also like to eat a lot of berries if I can get them. Things like strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, cherries, all of these things, if you can find them frozen, they're actually a lot better than getting them from your grocery because sometimes the grocery takes a very long time for it to ship into the store itself. And instead, they'll freeze dry those fruits and berries at a exact sweetness point. So sometimes the berries in your freezer are way better than the ones that are store-bought. But also if you can get to a farm, like I have in the previous gone to a few strawberry farms, then by all means go then because it is a fun experience and you get to pick your own berries. I also like to have a lot of pickles in my fridge because pickles for me are a great way to add some more fermented foods into my diet because once again fermented foods improve your gut health and also I personally really love the taste of pickles because yes they were originally used to create foods that would last a long time but because once again they have bacteria in them the sugar in them is not as much and it's also not something that I'm going to necessarily consume a lot of as opposed to eating a dessert or actually eating a piece of cake. I also try and avoid eating too much fruits on days that I have fermented foods just so that it is balanced in terms of the sugar levels in my body. But once again, when it comes to fruit, you're actually eating food that is going to be digested a lot more slowly as opposed to refined sugars which go through your body really, really quickly, thus giving you sugar highs, thus causing inflammation in your body. If you can eat less sugar and have it travel more slowly in your body, your body isn't going to really recognize it and cause inflammation in your body. In my case, because my autoimmune disease makes the body think that it needs to attack itself, that is a bad thing for it to do. And so therefore, I really, really want to make sure that I eat an anti-inflammatory diet. Thus, the whole change for the whole year that I've done. In one of my future videos, I'll be talking about what it was like to eat an anti-inflammatory diet for an entire year and how difficult that was eating gluten-free, dairy-free and refined sugar-free. 
some of the things I learned along the way, but in today's video, let's stick to how to get started. I know it's not easy to try and start an entire diet change, everyone who's watching, but I understand that it might be something that you've been forced to do and I never feel like you're alone doing this because there's actually a lot of people out there in this world who are now being diagnosed with autoimmune diseases who have found out that they are actually chronically awesome and that they actually need to do these changes in their lives. And the more we talk about it, the more we have videos like this, the more everyone actually recognizes that they're not alone and that people around you can support you better by knowing more about what you're going through. So by all means, make sure to talk about what you're dealing with. If you need to, share this video with them. And if that's something that you feel like would help somebody else to watch it, then that's something that they can help you, especially on hard days when you can't really decide on what to eat or if you feel like you just want to fall into the dark side and eat something that's not good for your body then they can at least help you out and go hey maybe it's not a good idea maybe you should go and eat this instead and that's something that actually happened for me over time as i went on this diet and i'll talk a bit more about it in a future video i hope this helps tip number four as i said before try out different alternatives in terms of foods what I mean by this is that trying out different fruits and vegetables and different recipes rather than just looking at gluten-free, dairy-free and refined sugar-free things that's uh, on their labels themselves, make sure to buy foods that are new and exciting for you. That way, rather than thinking of a diet as a thing that you have to do and that you feel like you're obligated to do, use it as a wonderful way to go, oh, I get to try something new. Because once you think that you're trying something new, you're much more likely to actually want to do it and you're much more likely to find pleasure in it and therefore positive reinforcement to your brain and to everyone around you that this is something that you're not suffering with but something that you've decided to do for yourself and it is good for you and that you're enjoying it and that's something that you can sustain in the future because that's the most important thing here guys that is sustainable for your future and for me i've always loved eating food so i would rather be happy with what i eat than to feel like i'm struggling with every single food choice that i make right when it comes to trying different foods like this, I normally try to add vegetables that I've never seen before and then I'll look up how to cook with them, what their nutrients are, what they can do for my body, and then also to see if I'm getting enough vegetables, enough fruits into my diet. And when I say fruit, I know that I mentioned before that I have a refined sugar-free diet. What happens is that I don't actually add any refined sugar into my food, but I do eat fruit. I eat fruit in moderation, like I eat everything in moderation. Because the moment that you tell yourself you can't eat something specifically, you're much more likely to actually have a problem and overindulge or binge eat or just be angry at yourself if you decide that you aren't following the rules of your anti-inflammatory diet perfectly. And that leads me to the fifth point. The fifth point is probably the most important thing when you are doing any diet in terms of taking care of yourself and in terms of actually seeing this is something that you can continue in the future. Because the most important thing is that you need to forgive yourself when you mess up. Because you're going to do it. You're human. Everyone's human. I've done it plenty of times. I have occasionally bought ice cream that is refined, sugar-free, dairy-free, and gluten-free. But it's still more sugar than I would necessarily have in my day. And that's okay. I accept that about myself because I'm somebody who, in my past, loved ice cream, would have double scoops, and would also lick other people's flavors. So. I own that completely and if that's something that you do too, please let me know that I'm not alone and silly. But in these circumstances, I only have really that sort of ice cream once every few months. I don't have it every week because every week would mean that I am not sticking to this autoimmune diet. And basically that also means that I'm adding sugar into my body which is going to cause any inflammation. Okay, so I would love to know what you guys think about this video today. If there was any useful tips, if there was something that you've learned that was new, if you think that was something that you will try out in the future, I would love to know. Please make sure to hit the like button. And also, if you want to see my future videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the notify bell button, because then you will know when I post up every week at the same time. Okay, so take care, lovelies, and have a beautiful rest of the day. And I will see you in my next video. Take care. Bye.